Hello, my friends. How are ya? I have a new video for you today. It's been a while, hasn't it? I, uh, yeah, life sometimes gets in the way of, of my painting, and that's what it's been for the last few months. But I have a new paint-along video for you today, and we're going to do it with a holiday theme, and I know we're not, you know, quite into December yet, but I wanted to specifically do this one because I know a lot of you have been continuing to paint and continuing to practice you some of you have sent me the pictures that you've made and I'm watching your skills grow and it's just fantastic so I thought um, if we did a fun holiday themed painting if some of you wanted to you would be able to use it maybe as a holiday card this year we've got enough time for you to get it done and get it printed so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna do a tree theme um, because trees seem to be um, or figure prominently in a lot of different holiday traditions. Um, so that's what we're gonna go with. It's gonna be a fairly easy painting, but you have a lot of creative leeway to embellish it however you choose. So what we're gonna start with for supplies today is two different watercolors of your choice. Doesn't matter what color they are. Um, we are going to blend the colors together, so you do want to make sure that they're colors that play nice together. So for instance, I did just some little sample swatches for you to see. Um, I think I'm going to do pink and green today because I kind of like that watermelon aesthetic. Um, this one is pink and a green, and I, I don't like the green I used for this. I'm going to use a different green, but um, I'm probably going to use pink and green. You could do something like pink and purple, blue and purple. Um, yellow and red you'll get some orange tones in there along with the yellows and reds yellow and blue you'll get some greens so just pick two colors that play nicely together and if you're not sure if they play nicely together from your set do something like this on a scrap piece of paper um, this I just literally put a blob of water and then put a little bit of one color and a little bit of another color and used my brush to kind of swipe them around a little bit to see how they do together so you can always use a little scrap piece of paper to do this to make sure that your colors are going to behave together the way you want them to before you actually put them on a painting so if you need to take a minute and do that, go ahead and do that. Like I said, I'm going to use a green and a pink today. So I'm using Daniel Smith watercolors. The brand of watercolors you use does not make any difference. This is just a set I'm currently in love with. So this is what I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use pink and a green. And the pink and green I'm going to use are quinacridone, pink, and sap green. <laughs> I, had to, I had to look at my cheat sheet and see what the names of my colors were. Um, and I am also going to use a little bit of brown for the stems. So if you don't have a brown in your set, you could mix orange and blue together to make a brown. You could mix red and green together to make a brown. Um, so play around with your colors a little bit Mix that you can mix to make a... I can't even talk today. It's been so long since I've done one of these. I don't even remember how to talk. <laughs> Um, you can play around with your colors a little bit to mix you a brown if you need to. And just as kind of a refresher, a primary color and a secondary color mixed together will generally make some shade of brown. So red, blue, red, blue, yellow are the primaries. Orange, um, purple, and uh, green are the secondary colors. So mixing like blue and orange green and red, yellow and purple, should give you some kind of brown, okay? I'm gonna use a round brush. This one is a, I don't think I'm gonna get it to focus on the writing because it's a silver brush. This is a Royal Langnickel Zen Series size eight round brush. Um, the brush you use doesn't matter. I particularly like these brushes because they're acrylic handles instead of wood handles. And if you've watched some of my earlier videos, you've seen my poor ratty wood handle brush that all of the uh, all of the lacquer has peeled off because I have a bad habit of leaving my brushes in the water. So I like these with the acrylic handles because they don't do that. It just stays nice. Um, so anything in this vicinity size of brush should work for you. I have a variety of pens that I'm going to use. Um, I like the paint pens for embellishment, particularly with 
white because it's a nice opaque color. Sometimes using um, a gel pen white, you don't get a good color. So um, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy these, but should you decide you want to, um, they're Posca paint pens and they really like them for nice opaque whites. If you have another type of white pen, because I do sometimes use white gel pens, um, I've got a Milky Pop, a Pentel Milky Pop, which is this brand. I like um, the Sakura white pens. I like, um, and I really like the Signo white gel pens. So any of them, these two are actually silver and gold. If you've got, excuse me, got any um, metallic silver or gold pens, those could be fun to add to it. I'm not sure I'm gonna use them. I just brought them out to show you. I do have a couple other Posca paint pens that I might decide to use for embellishments in the colors that I'm choosing. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use those again, but I brought them along just in case. And a trusty black pen that is waterproof. This one is a Uniball Eye Fine Point. I really like this one. It's a, um, I like I like the feel of writing with a ballpoint pen as opposed to a felt tip pen. So while I like the Pigma Micron pens for their waterproofness, um, they're a felt tip pen. This one is ballpoint and I really prefer that. It's just my preference. So I like this one. It is waterproof. When you let it dry, you can paint over the top of it. So I'm use that. And then I've got a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper already taped to a board. Um, I used Scotch wall safe tape to tape it down so you can see you can't really see the tape around my edges because it's a clear tape but it peels off really nicely without too much ripping of the paper so I've really been liking it so it's scotch wall safe tape I didn't measure around my edges to tape it down I just kind of eyeballed half the width of the tape um, my purpose with this painting is that I'm going to use this for my holiday cards so um it doesn't have to be exact for a border. I just need the paper to stay flat while I'm painting. I have it taped to a canvas board. You can tape it to whatever you have that is a solid surface, a um, piece of wood, glass cutting boards work well. These little canvas boards work, you know, something just solid to give you a good solid background to work on. The paper I'm using is Arches paper. However, any watercolor paper will work for you. 140 pounds or heavier is better just simply because that helps minimize the warping when you put the water on the paper. The piece I'm using is about, um, I don't know, six by nine inches, six by eight inches, something like that. It's, it's actually a scrap piece that I had. But again, my purpose with this is that I'm gonna use it as my holiday card. So I'm gonna paint on here and then I'm gonna scan it in and digitally have it printed on cards and we'll talk a little bit about that at the end you know how to go about doing that if you want to so with that we're going to get started um, this is going to be whimsical in nature as all of my things are just simply because that's what i like so when you're choosing your colors um you know i mentioned at the, at the beginning pick two colors you like there's no reason you couldn't do purple and blue trees they don't have to be green trees if you do decide you want something more traditional and you want to do green trees i would use two different shades of green so you've got a lighter green and a darker green just to give it some interest but certainly pick any two colors that you choose i'm going to zoom us in here a little bit so you can see better now I'm going to do mine the long way because I'm, I'm thinking of a card opening the long way. If you want to do yours portrait so that it opens side to side, you would turn your paper this way to do it. Um, because I'm going to do mine sideways or landscape, I'm going to try and get three trees across. If you're doing it portrait this way, you may only get one tree. And that's perfectly fine. So you can kind of decide how you would want this to go on a card. And after you do this first one, if you don't like it, you can always do another one. There's no reason you couldn't do two or three till you get it the way you want it. But I'm going to do mine sideways and try and get three trees across. So I'm going to pull my paints over here. Um, I am not going to dilute these on a mixing plate before I use them today. I'm going to use them straight out of the pan. So they're going to kind of be sitting off to the side, but essentially when I'm ready to use them, I'm just going to swirl my wet brush in there and pick up some paint as well. So it's nothing terribly complicated or scientific as far as diluting things like that. 
I am starting with a couple of different jars of clear water because I do want to have one stay clean so that I can use it as my background water. And because these are going to be whimsical and kind of on the fly, I'm not drawing this on first. So we're going to we're going to live a little bit on the wild side today and just start painting, okay? So hopefully we can see this okay. So what I'm going to do is just dip my brush in some clean water, dab it off on the side a little bit so I have a wet brush. It's not dripping. Nothing's going to fall on my paper. And here in about the middle, I'm going to draw a triangle in water with my brush. And give me just a second to get this wet and I will show you what it looks like. I'm not going for sopping, sopping, sopping wet because I don't want it to drip if I lift it up. But I do want it to have a little bit of a shiny sheen on the paper so that when I put the paint on here, they can kind of mix and mingle together and do what watercolors do. They can move around. Okay, so I just painted a triangle on there. I did not go... Hopefully you can see that shiny on there. I did not go all the way to the tape at the top because I want a little bit of room up here to draw some kind of little embellishment at the top. And I did not go all the way to the tape at the bottom because I need a little bit of room for a stem. So I just kind of eyeballed a triangle in the middle there. Okay. So now I'm going to come over and I am literally just swirling a wet brush and a little bit of my pink. This pink I know is pretty vibrant, so I don't want too too much of it and I'm gonna come and just kind of start dabbing it in here and there where the wet is on my tree and if your paper starts to look and feel like it's drying out and your paints not spreading around let's do this um, you can always just dip your brush back in the water and get a little more water and come back with just a little bit more water and you're just kind of tapping it in and using that brush to spread it around a little bit. Now, I'm not gonna cover the entire triangle because I need some space for my second color. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm gonna do the exact same thing in my sap green. I'm just gonna go swirl my wet brush around in the paint and in the spots where there aren't already paint, I'm just gonna kinda of start tapping in some of that green and use my brush to just kind of tap, tap, tap. You don't have to cover absolutely everything. If you want to leave a little bit of white space in there, um, certainly leave a little bit of white space. That adds just a little bit of interest. Keep in mind that watercolors are going to dry a little bit lighter than they go on. So you're going to kind of have to make a little bit of a judgment call when you put these on how dark you want the paint. If, um, when you get looking at it like this, see if I can move that a little bit so we don't get the glare off the wet paint. If um, you think you want it a little bit darker, just dip into the paint again and come back and dab a little bit more paint on top. If you want to, once you've got that paint on there that's still a little bit wet, you can tip your paper. Let me zoom back out, you can see what I'm doing here. You can tip your paper around and those paints are going to run a little bit into each other. And that's going to help them mix and mingle a little bit. So what we're going for is kind of this mixed and mingled look of paint just interspersed all over that triangle. Now, I'm going to put two more smaller ones off to the side, but I don't want them to run together. So I'm going to go hit this with a blow dryer real quick. This would be a good spot if you, if you are painting along with me. Pause your video here and go hit it with a blow dryer. Um, or a heat gun if you have that. Um, just make sure you do them on like a medium or medium low heat, not the super high heat, and then come back and we'll finish this, okay? Okay, I'm back with mine dry, and you can see that it is now a little bit lighter than it was when that paint was wet, so watercolors are always gonna dry just a little bit lighter. At this point in the game, if you decide you want yours darker, you can come back over the top of it with water and more paint. Just do essentially a second layer. Um, you will draw on top of it with plain water like we did to begin with. Just do it very carefully that you're not scrubbing over and over and over and over the same spot a lot because you can lift this first layer of paint. So you would just come in with a wet brush and just real quick go right over the top and then come back in with more pink and green paint and just dab it around again and essentially put a second layer just like we did the first layer. So you get to decide how light or dark you want it. Um, I am going to do 
two more trees kind of back over here and the reason I wanted this dry is I don't want these trees to run together simply because I want to be able to put a little bit of a shadow right along here for the trees the other two trees because I want them to look like they're behind this tree and if I put them on wet while this is wet and I run that darker green down here that darker green is going to run into this tree and I want a definite line of separation between them so that's why I wanted this dry so I'm going to zoom you in again and we'll do this side first um, I'm doing this side first because I'm right-handed if I do this side first and then I try and do this one, I'm inevitably going to set my hand in that wet paint, and I do that all the time. So if you're left-handed, you might go the other direction. Do this side first, and then come over to this one. Either way, they're going to be the same thing, just on opposite sides. So I'm going to get my brush wet again. And I'm going to do essentially the same thing. I'm not going to make these quite as tall. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller over here, and I'm going to make it so that it, it wants to overlap a little bit. I'm not actually going to put water into this tree, but I'm going to paint this on so that it would overlap. I'm just going to end it right there. So again, I'm just painting the regular water on. I think maybe this one I'm going to bring it down below the other one just a little bit. But same basic concept as the first one. Painting in plain water. You can see there's my water. Shiny sheen, not drippy wet, just shiny sheen. And what I did with it to make it look like it's behind the other tree, I brought it here, lifted my brush, and then came down here and continued it at the bottom so that this one sits down a little bit lower, but it's going to look like it's behind that other tree. And I'm gonna do the same thing with it that I did with the first one. I'm just going to grab um, the two colors that I used before and I'm just going straight from my paint pan dabbing here and there on the tree. Um, I don't know if you can tell because I'm coming straight from the pan you can see there's little spots of really dark pigment here where there was really a bunch of paint on the on the brush I'm okay with that that's gonna add to some of the interest of this little tree so don't worry about smoothing these out and making them you know really smooth and nice blends we want this to have some character and sometimes those darker dots and blotchy spots are what give it the character so I'm coming back in with my green and doing essentially the same thing. I'm just dropping in spots of it. I'm rubbing over my pink hair in there so they're kind of blending a little bit. If, it's, if it feels like it's getting muddy and your colors are not you're not able to tell the difference between the two colors in parts of it, rinse your brush off before you do anything else. And then if you need to move it around a little bit, do it with a clean brush, okay? Now I'm gonna go grab a little bit more of that green and I'm just gonna dab it kind of right here at the edge. Because it's wet, it's gonna do kind of that watercolor fan out. Light is bad today, isn't it? But that little dark dabbing of paint is going to make it look like a little bit of a shadow there. And I want it to kind of spread out and fan out a little bit, so I'm just going to tip. I'm just going to tip my board up a little bit and let that paint run and disperse itself. Tip it this way a little bit if you need to. Um, but you can see how that's going to create a little bit of a shadow making that tree look like it's behind the first tree. Now, keep in mind, it looks a little garish right now, but it's gonna dry lighter, okay? So, whoops, let's go to the other side and do the other side, and same thing. I'm just painting a triangle of water on. 
This one, I'm going to make it look like it's overlapped as well, but I don't think I'm going to make it quite as tall. So it will be a little shorter than the one next to it. They don't all have to be the same height. They don't all have to be the same width. They don't all have to be the same anything. That's part of whimsical. Okay, so like the others, you can see that shiny sheen of a little triangle there. I left a little bit of green tint in that water so that you could see it a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come in with my pink, dot it around. If you need a little bit more water, dip your brush in the water. And come back and just dot it around. And then I grab some green and do the same thing. Like I said, leave a little bit of white here and there if you want to. And there we go. Now I'm going to do essentially the same thing with this one. I want there to be a little bit of a shadow right here, so I'm going to grab just a little bit more green and just kind of dab it right there on the edge. Now this green can be really intense. So I realized when I put it on there, I got a little bit too much, so I just rinsed my brush off. And I'm just going to come back with a wet brush, clean wet brush, and just kind of dab it around a little bit. So again, you get that idea of a shadow. Okay? Now, I need to put some stems on these trees, so I'm going to take just a little bit of my brown paint, and I'm going to use just the very tip of my brush, and I'm just going to run a little stem down from each one. Nothing fancy, just a little bit of a brown stem. And you can make them as thick or as thin as you would like. Okay, so there is the basis for what we're going to do. So at this point, I'm going to go blow dry mine again, so this would be a good spot for you to pause and do the same thing, and I'll be right back with dry trees. Okay, I'm back with dry trees. Um, I mentioned they're going to dry lighter a couple of times, and you can see, particularly on this one, where that green looked so harsh to begin with, it's not quite as harsh now, and it's going to tone down even more when we start putting doodles on top of this. And same thing over here, that green dried a little bit lighter. So even just sitting like they are, it looks like there's a little bit of a shadow where this tree sits in front of these two trees, okay? And I was thinking about something while I was drying this. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a second and show you something. Um, there were a couple spots where I picked up that board and tilted it to get the colors to run. And it occurred to me while I was drying that 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 might've been kind of subtle and kind of hard to see. So I want to show you something you can play with, and you can use this in all different kinds of applications with watercolor. Um, tilting the paper lets the colors run, which can give you a really interesting effect. And how much they run depends on the pigment that's in the paint and how much water you're using. Okay, so I'm going to put just a little bit of water on this scrap paper. And I think I'm going to use that green because it's easy to see. So if I just run this line of green through that water, you can see this green spreads quite a bit on its own. It's the nature of the pigment that's in this green. And if I tilt it a little bit, you can see that it's running this way. You can see it over here. But it's very subtle because I didn't have a ton of water on this paper to begin with. It was just slightly wet. But you can see that by tilting it, you get a little bit more exaggerated spread of that paint. So sometimes when you're doing this, you might want that just real subtle spread, which is kind of what I had going on in my trees. Now, if you do this with more water on the paper, I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna put a boatload of water on here and then grab my green and do the same thing. You can see this green's really spready, but with more water on it, when I tip it, it's a much more exaggerated spread. And you can tip it back and forth, and you see it move? 
So you can get some really interesting effects by using tilting with your paints depending on how much water you put in them and how much you don't. You can see that move. So you can use that to kind of play around with it, tip it, tilt it until you get it the way you want it, just depending on how much water you put on it. So when I did it on my trees earlier, it was really subtle because that's what I wanted. So it was something more like this where I didn't have, you know, a boatload of water. It wasn't dripping wet, but you can get some other interesting effects if you do use it dripping wet. So that's something you can play with. Um, if you just want to mess around and get a feel for how your paints work is try, you know, using different paints because they have different pigments in them with different quantities of water and tipping your paper back and forth and watching them move and see what happens. Okay, so at this point we have dry trees. So here's where we're going to start embellishing them and this is the fun part for me. Um, I do want to point something out on here. If you look at the edges of my trees, wholly uneven Batman. Not real straight, are they? <laughs> For the way I'm going to finish these off, it's perfectly fine. Um, if you wanted to take your time more and make your edges straighter, absolutely do that. But for what I'm going to do with these trees, that unevenness is actually going to add to the effect, so I'm okay with it. And in all honesty, it took me a long time to get okay with that. Um, I, I tend to want perfect edges and symmetry and all of those kinds of things and so it's really taken a lot of practice for me to be able to look at that and say yeah good okay moving on <laughs> so what I'm going to do next is outline my trees first but I'm going to do them with a really loose outline and I'm going to do it a couple two or three times because I want them to have kind of that whimsical loose look so I'm going to start with the guy in the middle I've got just my black waterproof pen now Technically, these are supposed to be dry, but I am using my waterproof pen in case there's a spot that's not quite dry. Um, it will still bleed, but it won't bleed as much. Okay, so I'm just going to start outlining these with my black pen, but I'm not being very careful to follow the outline exactly. So there you can see, I didn't follow my edge very carefully. I'm going to do that same thing a couple of more times around that same tree coming off that line purposely so it's, it's almost going to look like um, here let's see so the idea of making a circle and kind of going like that and having all kinds of different lines that's kind of the look we're going for with this so I'm going to outline this tree again but I'm just doing it kind of loose and quick and I'm making sure that I go off that first line and I'm going to do it one more time So there we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for my other two trees, only where it overlaps the first tree, I'm not going to bring a line in here. So I'm going to start here and just come around to here and start here and come around to here so that I'm not going into this tree because that's going to give it the illusion of being on top. Okay. So we're going to do this same thing over here. And I'm going to have to turn this, y'all. Don't be afraid to turn your paper while you're working so that you have a better drawing angle. So there's my first line. And I'm going to do the same thing two more times, making sure I purposely come off that line somewhere, just so that it gives it a little bit of interest. Okay. Now. I'm going to turn me the other way and do the same thing on this one. So there we go. There's my imperfect trees. That imperfection is part of what gives you the whimsical look. In, in most whimsical type design, the lines aren't perfect, the shapes aren't perfect, they overlap, they mesh together, they go kind of wonky, and that's part of the fun of it. 
okay? So with my trees outlined, you can see that it, it really does lend a little bit more to that overlapping type of look, right? So now we're gonna start embellishing these trees. And we're going to do that with random shapes and designs that don't necessarily make any sense and maybe don't necessarily even look like something you would put on a holiday tree. But that, again, is part of the whimsy. So I'm going to start with this middle tree. I'm going to start with my black pen, and then I will come back with my white pen and some of the other accent colors as I go. I really don't have a plan for this. I'm just going to start doodling things. Um, I think on this one, I like the idea of some lines and dots, but I don't necessarily want them to end at the border of the tree. So I'm going to do something like this and let them extend off the tree. And then I think I'm gonna come back and color this middle one in so I have different thicknesses of lines. Um, part of the idea of putting doodles on to help get that whimsical look is that things don't necessarily match. We're not going for symmetrical, we're not going for matchy-matchy, all kinds of different things, okay? Um, I think I'm gonna do the same thing over here of a sort, only this time I'm only gonna do three lines. I am making them extend past the tree and I'm gonna color this one in. Again, to give me different line thickness just because that adds interest. And then I wanna put some dots with this, so I'm gonna come back and put just a couple dots here and there. I'm going to make them fairly large because I want to be able to put some white in there because white adds just another accent. The idea when we're doing something like this is that we're adding layer on layer on layer and every layer adds a little bit of interest. So our paint was the first layer and the black pen is the second layer and I'm going to come back with white. That'll be a third layer and then I'm probably going to come back with my pink and green and that'll be a fourth layer. So with every little bit we're adding to these, we're adding more visual interest, okay? Um, as I'm looking at this tree, I think I want, I think I want something hanging off the bottom. Um, because I've got lines on this one, I'm going to kind of stay with that same theme and I'm gonna put some different length lines on the bottom of my tree. Kind of think maybe tinsel hanging off the bottom. And then I'm gonna keep that same dot motif. And I'm gonna add some dots to some of those lines. I'm not gonna put it on all of them. You could if you wanted to, I just don't want to. A lot of this part of it is just personal preference. Um, you're gonna add doodles and lines and shapes until you're happy with it. So when I'm looking at this, I think I want a little bit more in there now. I tend to like uh, busy. <laughs> I don't know why. If you like a, a more simplified, cleaner look, then maybe you don't put as much as I do. So I'm just going to come back and add some little shorter lines in between just to kind of fill that in a little bit. Now, because this bottom line of the tree is kind of wonky, there's three different lines there, it really doesn't matter which one of those lines you butt these up to. You can do, you can, you know, do some to one line and some to another line. It really doesn't make any difference. So there's my little bobbles off the bottom of my tree. And I think I'm going to put another set of lines here. color the middle one in again. So when you're watching me do this, um, if you're drawing right along with me and you get it done and you decide these straight lines aren't your thing, that's perfectly okay. There's no reason you can't do another one that has different kinds of doodles that you like better. 
sometimes it's hard to think of what you want to doodle while you're sitting and watching something. You know, I, as I'm doing this, I'm telling you, put whatever doodles on here you want, but it can sometimes be hard when you're listening to somebody talk um, and learning something new to think of something different than what they're doing. So if you're doing exactly what I'm doing, great. And when you get it done, if you don't like it, just do another one. It's perfectly fine. Where do you get ideas for doodles? Pinterest is a fantastic place for that. If you go on Pinterest and search for doodle art, you could even Google doodle art, you'll get lots and lots and lots of things. And you can, you know, find some of those that just grab you. If there's a doodle image that just for some reason your eye keeps going back to it, pull that image up and zoom into it and look at the different pieces of it. And, you know, that can help you decide what what on there is visually pleasing to you. And then you can use those doodles on your drawing. We all do that. Everybody borrows from everybody else. Um, so I think I'm going to come put a couple little cross hatches on here. And again, all I'm going for right now is just adding visual interest to this. And on this tree, I think I'm going to put a little star at the top, but I don't want it sitting right against the tree. So I'm going to draw my little star there, and then I'm going to put a little curly line down to it. And because looking at this now, my stem, the trunk of the tree looks a little bit out of place, I'm just going to run a black line down one side to kind of match the wonkiness of the other lines. I don't care if I've followed the contour of the paint exactly. And I might come put another couple little straight lines in it just to give it a little character. So my first tree I, I think is done for now. I'm going to move on and do some black on the other two and then I'm going to come back with um, whites and some other colors and things like that. So I'm going to scoot this over. And with this tree I'm going to do something completely different. Again, it's the idea of adding visual interest. And the things you do don't necessarily have to match. Um, it's really interesting how doodle art works in that you can, you can doodle a whole bunch of unrelated things and by the time you're done, it comes together as this cohesive thing. And, and that's just what makes it interesting. So I think on this one, um, I'm gonna put some spirals. So I'm just going to do like this. Yeah, I think that's what I like. And I'm going to do them randomly over the whole tree. When you're doing something like this, odd numbers is generally more visually appealing. So you'll notice on this tree I did three line sets. I've got four spirals on there now, when I put the fifth one on, it changes everything. If you want more, you could put some smaller ones in. There's going to come a point when you've got so many on there that odd or even maybe doesn't matter as much, but when you're down in the low numbers, like one, three, five, odd numbers are generally more visually appealing. But when you start getting a lot, you know, you don't have to count and make sure that you've got 17. You get the idea. Okay. And then I think I'm going to put one right here so it looks like it's running off because it, right now, when I'm looking at this from my perspective, it looks like this is kind of an open hole here. Um, so I'm going to put a little spiral here, but I'm going to pretend it's going behind the tree. So I'm just going to lift my pen up right here, continue my spiral, lift my pen, continue my spiral. So it looks like it continues behind that tree like it would if the whole thing were decorated. Okay, I want to put something on the bottom of this tree, but I don't want to do the same thing I did here. So I think on this one I'm going to put like a little garland look. So I'm just drawing little half circles all the way across. I'm going to do the same thing on the trunk of my tree. Line down one side, a couple little lines here and there in the trunk. Um, I think I want, what do I want? I want a moon on top of this one. I come into these paint along videos with a general idea. So sometimes it's kind of hard for me to think of what I want to doodle too because I'm trying to make it up as I go. <laughs> and same thing, I'm going to put just a little curly line down. 
Um, and I think, again, because my preference is more is better, I'm going to put just some little lines coming off of the big spirals. I'm not going to do it on all of them. I'm only going to do it on my little spirals and just around the outside edges. Not great huge lines, just little lines. Kind of think of like maybe suns, that type of idea. Oops. There we go. So tree number two, the black layer's done. So I'm going to move us over here to tree number three. Uh, and I have no idea what I'm going to do on this tree. Maybe on this one we're going to make it more like um, a tree with traditional-ish <laughs> garland on it. So I'm going to start just slightly off my tree and I'm going to end just slightly off my tree and I'll show you why here in just a minute. And I'm going to do kind of this um, U-shaped thing, only I'm going to exaggerate it a bit. I'm going to make a really deep U's. And then I'm going to do another one here, but I'm not going to put it on exactly the same angle. Okay, so you can see where I started a little bit off here, I started a little bit off here. I'm going to bring these back up and wrap them around because it kind of makes it look like it's wrapping around the tree that way. Kind of gives you that little bit of a, a three-dimensional feeling to it. Um, and then I think I'm going to put little balls on my garland. I'm a fan of circles and dots, so those show up in my doodles a lot. There we go. I think I want something on the bottom of this tree too, but I want it a little bit different yet. So I'm going to do like maybe a little, think like pennants. We'll do a little zigzag garland on the bottom of that one, and I'm going to put little dots on the tip of my garland there. Same thing on the trunk of my tree, line down the side, just a couple little black lines in the trunk itself. I think on this one, I really like these little curly cues over here, so I'm going to bring those over to this side of the drawing. And I'm going to put one of those on the top of that tree. Okay. So there is our second layer with black pen. And you can see how just adding a little bit of black pen really changes the whole look and feel of it. You know, we started with just paint and it looked kind of, yeah, okay, whatever. But as soon as you start adding those black pen accents, it, it completely changes the character of what you're doing. Okay, so we're gonna add another layer of white. So I'm gonna zoom us back in a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with my white paint pen. Again, this is a Posca paint pen. I, these are my favorites, I love them. Um, because they're paint pens, you do have to shake them up a little bit. And the tips, um, when you press down really hard, that's how you re-ink the tip. Um, you can't see it, there we go. So for instance, if this feels like it's running out, I'm gonna put it on my paper and press it down and it's gonna press that tip in. I would highly recommend when you get to the point you feel like if you're using this type of paint pen, if you get to the point you feel like you need to re-ink this and you're going to push the tip of that pen in here, let me see if you can see it. To re-ink it, you just push it down real hard on the paper and it pushes the tip in. When you do that, it opens a valve that's right here and lets the paint flow in. So if you do that upside down on your paper and if you hold it too long, it can make a big puddle of paint come out. So I would recommend if, if you're using a paint pen and you get to the point where you feel like you need to re-ink the tip, do it on a scrap piece of paper, not on your painting, because if you end up with that big blob on your painting, it's, it's almost impossible to get it off. You have to figure some way to um, work that into your painting when you've got that big blob on there. So I would always re-ink the tip of a paint pen on a different scratch piece of paper. 
So I'm going to come in and just start adding little white highlights here and there. I'm going to add a little white dot to the center of either of all of these dots. Oops. And hopefully you can see that even just that little bit of white, again, changes the way this thing looks. Every little bit you add is going to give it new character, new dimension, and give it a whole different look. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit of white here and there in my black stripe. I'm not going to do a lot of it. Just a little bit here and there. Okay. Um, over here on this one, actually, I'm going to do, do the other one first because remember earlier when I said I'm right-handed, if I do this side first, I'm going to put my hand in it. If I go do this tree, I'm going to put my hand right in that white paint that's wet. So I'm going to go over here first, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add little dots to my black circles because that gives a little bit of character to them. I think I'm going to come back and add a little bit of a white um, mimic line underneath it. So I'm just following the same contour that I did for the first garland line underneath. Um, I did bring it off the edge a little bit, but because bringing it off the edge is white paper, you're not going to see it. You're only going to see that white on the tree, and that's perfectly fine, and I like that. Um, I like the way that looks, so I think I'm going to do another one right below it. So at this point, when you're adding these embellishments, you are literally making it up as you go. You're taking a minute here and there to step back from it, see what you think. If there's some place on here that catches your eye that it, it looks like it needs something else, then add something else in there. If not, leave it alone. So I am just kind of deciding on the fly what I think this needs as I go along. I think I'm going to come back to this one and I'm going to put some white dots on this one as well. There's really no rhyme or reason as to where or why. Just wherever I think they look good to my eye. Now, so that I don't put my hand in that wet paint, I'm going to flip this upside down <laughs> so that I can get to this side without putting my hand in what I just did over there. And I'm going to do the same thing. Um, add white highlights, excuse me, where I think I want them. I'm going to put a little bit of a white on the moon. And then I think on these big spirals, in between each of the lines that I made, I'm going to put dots. And then maybe just a few more here and there. Okay, so there's the white layer. You can see with every little bit we add to this, it just gets better and better and better and better and better, right? So I think I'm gonna come back with my pink and green paint pens and do kind of the same thing. I'm gonna add a few more dots here and there. These are Posca paint pens as well. They're just like the white one. The only difference is they have a bigger tip. Um, and the bigger tip doesn't necessarily matter. This is, these are just what I have. So I'm just gonna come in and add a few more random dots here and there. I am trying to keep most of my pink dots on the green paint, just cause you're gonna see them better but you can put some pink on pink here and there. It's still, when you're looking at it close up, you're still gonna, you're still gonna see it. So it's still gonna give you that dimension. And the green ones, I'm just gonna do 
some random onesies here and there. I don't think I want a ton of this green because it's, it's a darker green. It's a different shade of green. And I think it might get a little overwhelming with too much of it. So just a few green dots here and there. And there we go. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Now, if you wanted to, you could certainly put some background color behind here. Um, you know, wait till everything's dry and then come back in with like maybe a light blue or something like that and just do little washes of color here and there. I, I wouldn't do a lot, but it's completely up to you. If you think you want a full solid background, you know, certainly there's no reason you couldn't do that. I like the look. I, for some reason, I've, I've really been stuck on this look of the pink, the green, and white lately, and I'm, I'm not sure why exactly. Um, so at this point, I'm going to peel my tape off. On other paintings that we've done, the tape makes a noticeable border, but because I've not put any background color on, you know, it doesn't really make any noticeable border. It just keeps it white. I mainly put the tape on this one simply to keep the paper held down flat when I put the water on it. Um, the purpose of the tape on this one was not to create a background. Um, but I did want you to see that that tape pulls off nice and easy with minimal ripping of the paper. Now the one thing it did do was make nice even tree trunks down there at the bottom. So this is the image I'm going to use. <gasps> Oops, buzz on there. This is the image I'm going to use, I think, for my holiday card. So how exactly am I going to do that? If this is something you want to do after you get this painting done, or maybe you've done another painting that you particularly like and you want to use as, as a holiday card, or a card at any point throughout the year. Um, you could, if you're only going to do a couple of them, you can actually buy blank watercolor cards. They're, they're cards that are already folded, envelopes, the whole deal, um, but they're made out of watercolor paper so that you can paint on directly onto the card, ones and twos at a time. That's kind of fun to do if, you know, if you're not having to do a ton of them um, because each of them comes out unique and individual that way. If you're wanting to have them commercially printed because you need to send out a bunch of them, you can either scan this in if you have a scanner at home. If you don't have a scanner, you can take a good picture of it with your, your phone. Um, most cell phones, when you've got good light, um, will take a perfectly acceptable picture of something like this. Um, the idea is that we need to get it into a JPEG format and you can do that either by scanning or taking a picture on your phone. Most phones save pictures as JPEGs. If you don't have either of those options, but you have a local print shop in your town, you can often take this down to the print shop and they will scan it for you. They might charge you 10 bucks, but if you don't have any other way to get it um, converted into a digital format, um, most print shops can do that for you. Once you've got it in a digital format, then you need to get it onto a card. So again, local print shops can do that for you in most cases. If you take, you know, you just take the hard copy down and say, I want to make holiday cards. Can you help me with that? I need it scanned in and then I need it printed on the cards and they can walk you through that whole process, give you the pricing, you know, help you get it formatted correctly, everything. Um, if you don't have a local print shop or don't want to use a local print shop, something like Shutterfly, you can do that. There's a bunch of online places you can get cards printed. I don't have a lot of experience um, with a ton of different places, but I do use Shutterfly quite a bit and they do a really good job. So once you've scanned it in or you've taken the picture on your phone, you can go to Shutterfly.com and from their list, choose greeting cards and you can choose the blank greeting card. And as you're, it'll walk you through step by step creating that card. And at some point it's going to ask you to upload the image. So you will upload this digital image that you have either from scanning or taking a picture and it will place it on that card and it'll show you a sample of what it looks like. And then they have some basic editing tools so that you can, you know, move it around, make it a little bigger, make it a little smaller, however you want it, you know, whatever needs to happen to it. And then you can have them print them and it generally takes about seven to ten days to get your cards which is part of why I wanted to do this now so that you have enough time to do that and still get them in time to send them out. Um, I don't know if they have a little bit of a delay right now where we are running into holiday time and, and more people are doing something like this so um, it's not something I would wait a long time for if you wanted to do this. 
um, right now. Um, we're, the, we're, what are we, the Sunday before Thanksgiving right now. Um, but if you wanted to do, you know, Mother's Day cards or, you know, something like that at a different time of year, you'd do it the exact same way. Paint the image that you want, either scan it or take a picture. Um, I, I think even... Gosh, I think even like Walmart can do stuff like this now. I'm not real certain, but worth checking into. But there's lots of online places that you can get them printed, or you can go, like I said, to a local print shop, and they can do these for you too. So with that, I think we're done. I think I'm pretty pleased with my pink and green trees. Hopefully you are as well. Um, as with all the videos, if you have any questions when you get doing it, put the questions in the comments. I answer, I, I look at, read and answer all the comments, so I'm happy to answer questions there. Um, I will put all the supplies I used in the description of the video, so if you want reference for the exact pens and paints and things like that, that will all be in the description of the video with links. Um, they are not affiliate links, they're just products I like, so um, I will have that for you. and. Um, as always, if you want to follow along with my art journey, I am at Painted Willow Art on Instagram. I do have a Pinterest page as well where I post lots of things for inspiration. So if you're looking for um, doodle inspiration in particular, I do have a whole board on my Pinterest called Zen Doodles or Zen Tangle and Doodles. There are literally hundreds of things pinned there to give you ideas. So you can follow me there as well. Um, I, I have had several people ask about um, contributing to supporting these videos. So I did put a donation link in the description as well. If you feel called to throw a couple bucks my way to help support the production of these videos, absolutely feel free to. Um, I, I don't charge for these intentionally because my whole goal is to show you tips and tricks and things to get you creating. I think there is immense benefit in creating art. And I don't think that that um, is something that should be just for, um, you know, maybe people who have been told they have innate artistic ability. I think we all do. And I think a lot of these techniques we can learn and you can develop skill, whether you consider yourself an artist or not, you can create things like this and make them beautiful and have fun doing it. So that's the whole point of these videos. But if you do feel called that you want to contribute a little bit, absolutely, there's a donation link um, in the description. And with that, I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to go get this scanned so that I can get my cards made and get them coming. And hopefully I will have another video for you um, not too long, not as long as between the last one and this one, hopefully. So with that, have a good day and I will talk to you.